Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up on this show, we're going to take a look at a, uh, a bunch of new knives, new to me, uh, knives from uh, up-and-coming knife makers, uh, fixed blade knives that came to me from our good friend Justin over there at Tier 1 Gear Reviews, uh, Gear and EDC Reviews. Great guy. He's been loaning me a lot of knives over this past year, and uh, it's how I've been getting to know uh, a number of newish knife makers. We'll also take a look at a new Civivi that I'm actually interested in. Uh, two new Civivis, actually. Uh, you've been hearing me gripe about Civivis lately, just because it's fun, it's sport. Uh, and then, um, and then we'll take a look at a couple of oldies but goodies in the state of the collection. <clears throat> now you know when I'm dipping into the oldies but goodies, I haven't necessarily gotten anything that week new in my own collection to show off. And since uh, the main topic today is going to be showing off a bunch of loners, um, well, I figured I'd show off a couple of old ones. And maybe I've shown them off, but I love them. And I, I feel like they need a little attention too, because these were my EDCs 20 years ago. So 20 years ago, I was carrying these knives and they're still awesome. I still, I never carry them anymore, but I wanted to show them off. So, uh, but uh, you know how this show works. The first opportunity to show off a knife is the pocket check. So here we go. Uh, for this pocket check today, I was carrying, um, you know, I've been into the classics and this one is new ish, but it's, it's already a classic as far as I'm concerned. And by classics, I'm talking about, I've been really into the XM 18s, the Sabenza. Um, lately I've been carrying my Sabenza. I carried it for a week straight. That is insane. I don't care anything, carry anything for a week straight. So today I decided to deviate to another new classic, uh, and that is the Spartan Harzy folder. You know, I carry this thing with some regularity. I absolutely adore um, Mr. Harzy's designs. Get this thing in focus here. I love his designs. And uh, this is my favorite iteration of this, though they though they do a lot of cool uh, engraving and and different um, kind of treatments to this knife. I really love the plain Jane version of it. I, I love the way the stonewashed titanium looks with the stonewashed blade. And um, if you if you haven't handled one of these yet, it's it's worth trying to get one in your hands, whether it's a loner or um, you know you you just save up and buy one uh, because they are solid. They have the solid, smooth feel of a Sabenza. They kind of have the build of a uh, XM18. They are the love child of those two, as far as I'm concerned, with the with the um, beautiful design of Bill Harsey, who just has been designing knives for a long time, knows what he's doing. This thing is so smooth and just so like built, stacked, solid. It's awesome. Love this knife. Doesn't even have a lock bar insert. Doesn't stick. I love that. I if if I can get knives without the lock bar insert that are smooth and stick free, to me that's uh, that's hitting the golden mean right there. That's 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 hitting the jackpot. This is one of those knives, and uh, so this is what I was carrying today. Um, I also actually. Um, uh, just on the direction of Jake from Bearded Gear, I'm not going to go into this knife much, but I had this with me today, his Avant by Luft Concepts. That's his company with Ryan Rimmer. And uh, this is their first prototype. Great knife. And I, I was talking to him last night and I said, I didn't want to, I uh, didn't want it to leave the house because it's a prototype. And I worried and he's like, no, that's a calculated risk. That's why I sent it to you. Take it and use it. So I did just that today. And what an amazing knife this is. And a great carry. This was a back pocket carry for me today. Nice and light. Um, but here, so I'll put this down in here. Um, but my other uh, knife today um, of my collection that I intended to use if I needed to, and of course I didn't, but I had it just in case, uh, was the classic, uh, another modern classic. I love this knife and this guy. Uh, Alex Steingraber, Steingraber Performance Knives. Such a cool cat, such a great knife. This was his first one, the Shark. He's also got the Sasquatch. 
Is that what it's called? I can't remember. He's got a, a, a second knife um, that is by all accounts great. To my eye, doesn't look as great as the shark. I think the shark is just awesome. Um, it's a thin blade stock, a broad shaped blade, and fully flat ground. So it is an absolute laser beam behind the edge. It's so thin. I mean, it gets really, it gets this thin. Listen. I love the sound of a very thin, very sharp blade. Uh, kind of like the Avant here. Has the same sort of sound. Uh, so this is, uh, like I said, fully flat ground. This sucker is in crew wear, and that's the only crew wear anything that I own. Um, let me try and get that uh, to focus there. So that crew wear blade is amazing. I've only really used this for cardboard. I'm trying to think of what else I've I've legitimately used this for, and I can't say much, uh, but I've carried it an awful lot because it's light and small. And um, this is the only knife uh, right now that I carry in Scout carry. So I carry this horizontally on my belt in the front. That's right, right up front at about the 11 o'clock position. Great, great, great knife. Love this. Alex, uh, I'm so happy I was able to snag this knife on the secondary market because uh, I kept missing drops. I miss drops. That's what I do. I just don't, I'm, I'm not paying attention or right before a drop happens, I spend my money on something else. Um, so, so that was my fixed blade today. And then I also carried a little pry tool thing. And this, these are not actually my, my, my bag. Uh, but um, I received this as a gift from um, Jason Stout, and I've really grown to love this thing. This is called the Broner, dude. It's the Broner. And it's for bros because you can open bottles with it. You can scrape stuff with it. This is a great, I haven't used it for anything yet, but this is a great, this pry uh, end is super flat and would be a great, scraper. So I'll, I, I have a couple of old stickers on my car windshield that I'm looking to scrape off uh, probably this coming weekend. I'm going to give this thing a try before I resort to a razor blade, see how that works. But really, I like this just as a, a cool thing to have in my pocket, kind of like how I carry the uh, the Wingard wearable, wearables quill. Uh, the quill, of course, is, a, is another kind of utility tool um, slash weapon. This is just so pleasing because it's got all this, it's got the signature sort of style and design of Jason Stout with these lines. It looks a lot like the lateralis and everything about this is just oozing style. And I think Jason Stout is a great guy. And I think his knives are just knockouts, man. Someday, someday I'm going to graduate to some of the finer, 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 finer knives and uh, Jason Stout knives, JB Stout knives will be among them. So this is what I carried today. Uh, primarily, it was the Spartan Harzi folder with the four-inch blade and, and the Steingraber Performance Knives Shark uh, with the with the Broner by Jason Stout doing double duty or just doing pocket duty, I guess. And, uh, and then the uh, Avant riding along just because um, I needed to use it and fiddle with it. And I did plenty of the the latter. <laughs> okay, so what are you carrying today? Let me know. Call the listener line 724-466-4487 and let me know. It can be a three-word message. No, no, no. Make it a five-word. Hi, Bob, carrying the Sabenza. Boom. You don't even have to say bye. Actually, say bye. So make it seven. Bye, Todd. You know, so, so I know. Goodbye, Todd. So I know who said it. And, uh, you know, we keep talking about this, but someday we'll amass a giant amount of these messages and we will uh, make a big audio montage. And most of them will be, uh, hi, this is Harriet. I need an appointment with Antonio uh, this coming weekend. I think I think it's a number very close to a hairdresser somewhere in Pennsylvania because I get some weird messages. So call the listener line. Let me know what your pocket check is. 724-466-4487 uh, or just leave a comment down there might even be easier. And let me know what you're carrying. I am interested. Uh, so a little a little something here. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone, you only have a couple of days left to give to Knife Rights, the Ultimate Steel, their annual fundraising event, 
where you give and they give back in such a big way. Uh, just a, a whole huge, I mean, okay, go to kniferates.org, click on the ultimate steel and check out all the knives and firearms and safari packages and all this crazy stuff that's still available as thank you gifts. Um, so go give money to the ultimate steel, whatever you can. Uh, that money goes to help fund knife rights. Uh, uh, Doug Ritter doesn't make any money off of knife rights. As a matter of fact, I have a feeling it's a money pit, but he's out there every single day fighting with politicians uh, and against politicians to get rid of these ridiculous, stupid knife laws. So we, we got to help him out. He's really helping us out. Another way to help out knife rights and to help out Doug Ritter is to buy one of his tremendous knives. Uh, he's got a number of different knives. Of course, you all know the RSK Mark I. That's his Ritter grip now made by Hogue in a, a, in a superior fashion. Uh, and then he's got large and small, different color uh, g Mascuses. That's, uh, that's a multicolored uh, G10. And, uh, and then he's also got the fixed blade knife. That's the number three, that nice big fixed blade. It's about a five inch blade. And then the, uh, the little survival knife, this is the Mark three comes in a little, uh, thing. Uh, the, the knife comes in a little tin, so you can make a little, uh, micro survival kit, uh, really go and you get all those at Knifeworks. Uh, those are exclusives, Doug Ritter and Hogue exclusive knives through KnifeWorks. So however you do it, support Knife Rights because it allows us to do this. You know, uh, just a little sidebar. Uh, my wife mentioned something about opening an office in Canada. Do you want to move to Canada? And I was like, I'd love to move to Canada for the view, but uh, I don't think I can do that. Uh, Canada, um, you know, their knife laws are pretty strict or stricter than they are here. Uh, so go Feed the ultimate steel, feed knife rights, and uh, and let's let's keep enjoying our awesome rights. Okay, that's enough. Sorry, I've gone on at length about knife rights, but it is an important organization. Uh, before we get into uh, knife life news, I want to mention we have a couple of new patrons this week, and I'm so grateful. As is Jim, we have Bryce the Blade Freak. He's at Blade Freak on Instagram. Great guy. He joins us on Thursday Night Knives quite a bit. And uh, it's always a pleasure to, to hear what he has to say. And uh, next time you hear from me, I will have a knife that I actually bought from uh, Bryce this past week. I'm very excited to get that. I guess I'll save it up. If I haven't blabbed it already and you don't know what it is, I'll save it. It'll be a surprise. Um, but it is in the theme of classic EDC, a modern classic EDC uh, knives. So thank you, Bryce. He is a tactical junkie. Tactical junkie is the $5 a month uh, support level. Greatly appreciated, sir. And then we also have a new gentleman junkie. And a gentleman junkie is the $10 per month uh, support level. And uh, that gives you, uh, all levels give you uh, exclusive content. That's extras from the interview. Um, and you get stickers and, and other stuff. But when you're a gentleman junkie, you also get entered into the monthly knife giveaway. Uh, this month, that giveaway will be on October 21st, Thursday, October 21st. It's usually the third Thursday. And this month, I'm not sure what it's going to be, but I have a feeling it might be a Finch knife. Uh, Jim and I were just talking about it beforehand. And our new gentleman junkie is Kevin Moore. Kevin, thank you so much for signing up and uh, and supporting us here, helping support the show. It's so greatly appreciated. And and it's always humbling to know that someone would, uh, would like to exchange their hard-earned money for Knife Talk. So it is so greatly appreciated. Uh, thank you, Kevin Moore. And thank you, Bryce, the knife freak, uh, the blade freak. It's so greatly appreciated. Um, so uh, if you want to hear your name on the show, just go to Patreon <laughs> uh, and, and give. We'd love to love to hear from you. Uh, it's a great way to support the show. And um, well, if you're interested in all that exclusive stuff, just go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon and you can sign up there. Once again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. 
The GetUpside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. GetUpside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. So I've been kvetching a lot recently about the Elementum by Civivi and how they just keep pumping out new versions of it, uh, sort of in the spirit of the Birkin, uh, the Birkin, the Boker Burnley Quaken that has eight trillion versions. This one's small. This one's light. This one's brass. This one's automatic. This one's out the front. This one's. I mean, they just keep coming out with new uh, Quakens. Well, Civivi's doing the same thing with the Elementum, and I know it's their top seller of all time, so it only makes business sense, uh, and I've been complaining about it. Um, kind of like Hollywood. Man, do I have to suffer through another superhero movie? Come on. Let's have some slow-plotting drama about family stuff for a change. Uh, but Civivi just did good by me. Uh, they didn't ask my opinion, but I, I, I like this. Uh, they have two new multifunction knives coming out and they're not Swiss army knife style and they're not uh, Leatherman style, which is also exciting. Uh, these are more reminiscent. If you ask me of a classic sort of slip joint, multi-bladed slip joint, two knives. Uh, the first one is called the crit. And the second one is called the Relic. Let's talk about the crit first. That's that first picture you saw there. Uh, so this is a, uh, you know, it's got that sort of um, oh, signature sort of, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Neutral shaped handle. And then it's got a very Civivi-esque uh, drop point blade. The whole package, I think, is really fetching. And you say, yeah, but Bob, you were just complaining about how they all look the same. Um, but to me, this one just, is more Civivi than the others in it. I just like the way it looks. But what I really like is that it's a, a two-layer knife, like a like a um, Swiss Army knife or any other sort of slip joint with uh, extra tools. And these two knives have extra tools. This one, the crit, has, as you can see, this folding thing that comes out. It's got a um, screwdriver at the tip. It's got a sort of seat belt cutter kind of package opener thing there uh, with that little sharpened hook. It's got a number of little hex cutouts, and uh, so this is uh, on a on a uh, on a on the chassis of or on what looks to be a regular sort of Civivi folding knife. Um, I know saying regular doesn't really doesn't really say much, but y you get the idea. This looks like a Civivi, but they added an extra tool, and I really really like that. Uh, the blade, nice simple drop point. It's a flat grind. So it's pretty slicey, you know, as they go from uh, from Civivi. And, um, you know, I'm not sure how that knife comes out. Uh, hmm, I don't know. I'll have to be. Oh, it is. A, it's a front flipper. OK, that makes sense. It's a front flipper for the main blade. And then that other thing that comes out, that other tool that comes out uh, locks in place. And that has a, uh, you know, like I said, those other those other tools. So it's cool. It looks at first blush like a, you know, just your run of the mill Civivi. I can't remember what model this looks exactly like actually. Uh, but then you take a, a look, a little bit deeper look and you have this, all this other capability. So I really like that. The second one is the Relic and it's slightly less utilitarian, uh, but equally cool if you ask me, because first of all, I like the look of it. I like that clip point blade. It's a standard sort of regular flipper and it has tweezers. It has tweezers, the most beloved tool uh, for me anyway, from the Swiss Army knife. The tweezers and the scissors and the toothpick, I guess, are my three favorites. Well, look at that. It's got a little pair of tweezers that fits right in the back of this single layer uh, flipper knife. I, I love that. I love that. So maybe on the next version, they put a toothpick too. Uh, I, I would love that even more because... Um, yeah, you got a you got a sharp and pointy tip there. You could use that to pick your teeth, I guess. Uh, but who out there likes this? I think it's cool uh, because they're making it a multi. They're making these things multi tools, but they're not making them look like multi tools. They look like your sort of average EDC knives or average EDC Civivi knives. And um, 
uh, but they do have all this extra capability. So to me, I, I, I find it kind of, I think saying thrilling would be taking it a bit far, but I, I find it exciting. Whereas uh, I've been sort of like this with Civivi. Oh, that's a nice one. Well, I bet that's sharp. Oh, that's a slicey one. Oh, that's nice. Uh, but not, not too excited, but these are exciting to me. Is it, is it because I feel a slip joint? I feel a traditional knife, um, uh, stage coming on. I kind of do. And, and this happens with the onset of fall and winter. Uh, it's easier for me to carry those, uh, these kind of, uh, slip jointy type knives in the winter because I'll just slip it in a little slip and put it in my pocket and it'll remain north to south. And since I'm in heavier clothes, it doesn't feel as heavy. Uh, otherwise, you, you won't catch me with a slip joint and shorts. It just doesn't happen. So as we move back into the colder weather, multifunctional knives are starting to uh, you know, strike my fancy again. And I think that this is a cool move from Civivi. So thank you, Civivi. Uh, next up is a new Best Tech. And uh, this is kind of best tech going back to their roots. It's a budget friendly, uh, yet very cool and unique looking design. Um, this one's called the Operator. And it's a kind of a funny name because uh, when I think of Operator, especially in the knife context, I think of a guy slipping through the dark in all of his tactical gear and, and you know, cutting throats and stuff like that. Sentry removal, you know, that's what you think of when you think of an operator. Not a bright orange, uh, you know, fantasy-shaped Warncliffe, but gosh, that's unfair. It's not a fantasy shape. It's an interesting swoopy shape, um, but that's what they decided to call it. I think it's very cool. Uh, it's a little bit smaller than I prefer. Uh, but I just think it's a great, it's a great looking knife. This is a, uh, it's got G10, you know, your standard sort of uh, G10. It's got a, a D2 blade, uh, which is unsurprising. Uh, it's got a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a, a very uh, nicely thin ground, uh, saber ground blade and G10 scales. It's just sort of your kind of, um, I don't want to call it run of the mill. It's not run of the mill. Um, well, yes, I, I guess actually that's exactly what it is. It's a run of the mill best tech. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in the, it's, it's a $65 knife, which is kind of how they came out of the gate, uh, for us anyway. And they've been steadily moving into the high end, um, you know, with some of those combo designs that are so intricate, intricate to produce and the materials just keep going up and up and up. So this is kind of a nod to their roots. Uh, the, it comes in either orange, green, or black G10, which I think is cool, coated and uncoated blades. I got to say, I really, I generally don't go to, uh, for orange knives, uh, but I like this orange and black one. It's kind of Halloween-y. Um, I said weenie, but I really like that, uh, the shape blade with the, with the multi-finished you know, I like I like that it's black on the flats and satin on the uh, on the swedge and on the edge. So I don't know or the the main bevel. What do you think? What do you think of this knife? Is it uh, more of the same? Um, when open, I think it's a little reminiscent of that uh, of that recent concept uh, that it's a lot more swoopy on the on the handle. But uh, I should have prepared. I should have, I should have known what that, uh, new concept knife is called. So it looks a little bit like that, but, uh, I don't know. I think it's cool. What do you think? Do you like the harpoon on top of the Warren cliff? Is it too much? Maybe, but it does create quite a nice little thumb swale there in front of the opening hole to put your thumb. Um, it'd be cool to see this in a longer, in a larger version. That's a, a little bit more stretched out. I feel like this is one of those designs that, uh, whose true expression could benefit from a little bit longer length, kind of like the XM. A couple of the XM 18s uh, look better as 24s. Um, some cars look better with larger engines because the hood is, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So I think this uh, operator might benefit from A, a name change, and B, a, uh, a, a larger version as well, maybe an XL operator. Uh, that being said about the name, you know, it's just picking nits. It's not what I think of when I think of an operator, but uh, you know, maybe that's not what they intended. Special Forces operator. So that's what we have this week in the uh, uh, Knife Life News. Still to come, we're going to take a look at a couple of oldies but goodies. And then 
we're going to show off some of these really cool knives from uh, custom knife makers sent to me by uh, Justin, Mr. Tier 1, Gear and EDC Reviews. Stay tuned. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Okay. So, excuse me, that's a little piece of ice in my mouth. Sorry. A little bit of uncensored Knife Junkie here. Okay, so I was thinking today about stuff that I carry and and how it's evolved over the years. And then I kind of tried to think of what my oldest was. And I've shown it off a lot, the old SOG Wildcat uh, backlock. Uh, but I wanted to, I wanted to, I carried that, but really I got into a, a few years later. And uh, so what was I carrying in 98, 99? That's, that's what this is right now. So I have two here that I, I pulled out of the archive uh, to show you. The first is a Cold Steel Tie Light. This knife, uh, I saw this when they first came out with the Tie Light. Uh, I believe the very first iteration was in titanium, the handle, and it was expensive. And then very shortly thereafter, they came out with the Grivery model, uh, probably recognizing that they'd make more money on a $60 knife than they would on a you know, $160 knife or whatever it was costing at the time. And uh, so there, there it is. This is a beauty. Uh, reminds me so much of the Italian, classic Italian stiletto. I think that's the, uh, well, that was the inspiration, uh, definitely. A couple of things have always stuck in my craw about this design and they've never changed them because they didn't ask, frankly. Uh, and I'll tell you what that is. Uh, two, two things. First of all, I always thought it was a little bit wide. Uh, I wouldn't mind this uh, with non, you know, if you look at it in cross section, these handle scales are contoured. If it, if, if this, if these scales were just flat, you know, same, um, same width at the spine, but just flat without that contour, I would have liked it a little bit better. Uh, as it is, it's fine. And, uh, but it's a little round. It's a little roundish for my taste, and it might turn in the hand in a high-stress tactical uh, engagement, and I get in these things all the time. Um, so, you know, flatten that handle out. Of course, that's a joke in case you're new. Uh, I don't get in knife fights. I just like to imagine uh, how a knife would perform if it were put to such a task. The other thing that has stuck in my craw about this design, but I have forgiven, is the Quillian setup. I, I feel like they got it backwards. I feel like this Quillian uh, should be on the bottom and vice versa for two reasons. One being that uh, the forward facing Quillian on top would give you a thumb ramp, a jimped thumb ramp that you could um, push your thumb against, obviously brace your thumb against uh, for thrusts as it is. It's got, it's got this sharp pointing hooky thing pointed towards you. The other reason I would like to see these Quillians switched up is that this is a waveable knife. In other words, you can pocket deploy this off the seam using that Quillian. But it requires, since, since this uh, curve is shying away from the surface it's going to be snagged on, it requires very sharp jimping here to actually do the job. You know, pull it on the pocket and then it opens like that. Um, what if it were just flipped around and this was hooked in that direction? You wouldn't need the jimping and it would do the job better without having to like really press against your seams. Now, I guess the question pops up, would that have been some sort of a, um, a patent violation against the Emerson wave because it's too much of a curving forward hook type thing. Uh, if you turn it around, I'm not sure, but I can't imagine I'm, I'm the only person to have seen that and thought that like, oh, those quillions are jacked up. They need to be reversed. Um, maybe, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. But in any case, this was a daily carry for well over a year, you know, back, back in the day. So I wasn't buying knives all the time. I would buy a knife like this. It would put me out quite a bit, especially when I was a freelancer and much younger man and, you know, not making much money or whatever. Uh, this, this knife would last me a long time. And, uh, you know, of course I would look, I would pine for other knives. Uh, but 
also back then I wasn't as much of an internet junkie as I am today. And there wasn't as much on the internet to actually be gawking at. So um, this would satisfy me for much longer. Uh, yeah, so I carried this for quite a while. This was these. This was during my my New York City days. Um, you can see it. I sharpened it or attempted to sharpen it many times. It is razor sharp now, uh, but I did all sorts of stuff to it, trying to get it sharp before I sort of hit my stride with the sharpening and the honing. So there we go. There's one, and then I want to show you the other one. This one was even more important, more central to my EDC uh, back in the day. And that is the four inch El Hombre. This is a Vaquero knife. And back in the day when this came out and it was four inches, they called this the uh, El Hombre. And then they made the, uh, the larger one, the six inch version of this, which I have, they called that the Vaquero Grande. Now they're just all Voyagers with the Vaquero style blade. Uh, but in the time, you know, this was the first iteration of this blade style and the blade style has changed. Uh, I'm wondering if you can see it. Uh, I do not have a four inch um, Vaquero anymore, but you can, you can see it. You can see it. It, this is, this reaches down um, on the spine. It's more an, of an extreme dip and yet the recurve is a little less extreme on this. So just a differently shaped blade. I think it's beautiful. Um, that was originally my impetus for buying it was I thought it was beautiful. And I had just discovered Knife Center at the time. And uh, I've always been in love with the, with the Navajas. And at the time, this was the closest thing to a modern modernly constructed Navaja you could get. This was before the Espada series by Cold Steel came out. And of course the Espada series really has the Navaja look, uh, like even more so than this, but always love that recurve blade. I wanted this without the serrations at the time. Now I have a deep appreciation for serrations and um, I, I kind of did it in the reverse of what most people do. Most people start with serrations and then grow into, uh, you know, I, I think serrations are awesome now because um, this knife could really, really penetrate um, anything. Well, a lot of things with that curve and those serrations. And of course, uh, this got minimal use. Uh, this is still stained on the blade, on the tip of the blade. You probably cannot see it, but I can see it. And I know it's there. From a camping trip, I went on with an ex-girlfriend and I cut... Uh, I cut lin or tofu lin with this. Uh, if you don't know what tofu lin is, it, it's actually really good. I love tofu and all that kind of vegetarian stuff. And I cut tofu lin with that and uh, stained the blade, and it's never gone back. Uh, so th that's a little memory of that uh, camping trip. So there you have it. That's what I was carrying 20 years ago, either either the tie light or the vaquero or the el hombre. I remember the day I got the el hombre. Um, it showed up to my office and I used to have a job where I could, uh, play hooky in the middle of the day. I, I left and I went uh, to see ghost dog, uh, the movie with, um, oh, it was a Jim Jarmusch movie about a, an urban samurai guy. Uh, and I remember I had just gotten this and I could not, I, I was playing with it in the theater and I had so much trouble. It was so stiff. And I thought that they put the, uh, thumb stud in the wrong place. I'm like, they put the thumb stud way too close to the pivot. It was so hard for me to open up one handed. And, you know, over time it broke in. And then over time I discovered the flick and it worked. This works great as a flick, a thumb flick knife. So, um, great, great knife. And you know what? Uh, the triad lock of course is superior to pretty much anything else. Uh, but their regular backlock before Demco joined the crew and introduced the um, the triad lock, their their regular old lockback is awesome. It is strong. I mean, they marketed marketed it as very very strong at the time, and they were right. It is. And you take the triad and you just you just zilla it. You know, it's like lockback zilla. Um, just 
bigger and more powerful. Uh, so that's what I was carrying. And uh, thanks for indulging me during this little trip down memory lane. All right. The main event of the day is to show off the knives that came in this awesome box. I love when Justin of Tier 1 Gear gear and EDC Reviews sends me a box because it's usually big, biggish, squarish, and just jam-packed full of cool knives. And this time was no exception. Now, uh, Justin, uh, you have to subscribe to his channel. It's awesome. I love his videos and his insight is really good and his taste is really good. And he's got a little... Uh, uh, sub fascination, I'll say. If if knives are his full fascination, he's got a sub fascination uh, that he is sort of stoked or or even sparked within me, which is seeking out uh, newer knife makers who are just making their initial splash now and getting their knives, uh, not only patronizing them, but getting these fantastic knives from makers that are in their ascent and maybe even early in their ascent. Uh, that's how I got to know um, uh, Ron Steele Designs, Ron Steele Jr. I've been showing off my Prime a lot lately. Um, someone is borrowing that right now, so I cannot show it to you. Uh, but let me show you these other two Ron Steele knives uh, that, that Justin sent me. So these are two knives that are in Ron Steele's um, kind of more of his EDC. Most of his knives are small, smaller. Uh, the, the prime that I have is a larger, it's like a four inch bladed fixed blade, a um, little more tactical. And I had to make it a lot more tactical by double edging it and such. But these seem to be his bread and butter when it comes to knives. Uh, I think more people are buying these smaller EDC style knives because you can drop them in your pocket. You can, they're also set up to, uh, fastened to your belt or to your waistband, but really they're, they're very small and discreet. You can drop them in your pocket. So this model is called the short round, which I think is funny. So I'm going to show them in their sheath first because the sheaths uh, are awesome. Ron does awesome sheath. This is a cool thing. You can see this little sub hilt protruding from the knife. It's a, it's part of the tang here. Um, and when you pull out the way the sheath is constructed, you can just you can get full purchase on the knife and remove it and you have your hand, you have your finger seated in that choil in front of the um, sub hilt. So really nicely done with that sheath. But this right here, this is, uh, I believe this is 80 CRV2. I think all of his knives are. And uh, this has a dark acid wash, saber grind, beautiful swedge. This is the drop point version. And he calls them DPs. His uh, his drop points are, you'll know it because he'll call it DP. This one has, um, like I said, a saber grind, a beautiful swedge, a continuous belly. You know, from here to here, maybe from from the uh, Ricasso area to the to I don't know, like a, the first inch could be used as flat. But really, this is a full bellied knife, and. Um, you know, I think it's beautiful. <laughs> uh, this is fat carbon fiber. So nice and just lovely. You know, now, um, Ron's Ron shows a lot of his artistic ability and his artistic instincts, I'll say, in his handles, in his handle execution. Ron is a, uh, a designer, a graphic designer, and you can see it uh, as it comes through in his work. Let me show you his maker's mark real quick. There it is. It's like an ace, or no, no, uh, a, uh, a spade there in a square. Can you see that? Might be a little hard to see up close. So yeah, fat carbon fiber, just a great little uh, full grip knife. I mean, just barely. You can get your, your pinky on most of it. Uh, but he sends them, some of them, I think this model, all of them, uh, with a lanyard here, a little fob with a cool bead. He makes the beads and uh, he just is having a bead sale currently, as a matter of fact. So check out, check him out. He's at Ron Steele Designs uh, on Instagram. So this is the, this is the short round drop point. And now here is just, it's just the short round. I think this was the initial one. And 
It's a beautiful sheep's foot, worn cliff, sheep's foot style blade. Um, cleaver, we'll call it a cleaver. It's kind of a cleaver style blade with a bit of a, a uh, with a bit of a tip, tiny bit of a tip. I mean, this, this could still no doubt puncture a, uh, a uh, clamshell package and all of that, but it's not much of a point. So same, same setup, same deal, different blade. And um, you can do that with a Ron Steel Prime as well. He does the Prime in a drop point and in a really beautiful Bowie. So um, check him out, Ron Steel Designs on Instagram for these beautiful, beautiful fixed blade EDC knives, little EDC knives you can drop in your pocket. Um, and they're, they're all just really classy and beautiful. There you got liners there. And uh, he's done a couple of these matching pairs for Justin. Uh, Justin's prime, uh, he's got two primes, a Bowie and a drop point, and they're kind of matching. They're complementary. They, they, uh, they don't look, they don't share the same handle material, but they, they share a lot of the same materials back and forth. So uh, I think if you wanted to have Ron make you a set of knives, a matching set. Uh, that seems to be right up, right up his uh, his alley. So beautiful, bolted on handles. Everything about these knives, I dig, including the sheaths. So those are the Ron Steel Primes. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna set these out over here and set them up so we can look at a a main view later. Next is a Quaken in kind of made in the Japanese style. Now, the rest of the makers I talk about, I don't know much about. Uh, I know I know about Ron because I bought a knife from him and we've talked and uh, we attempted to record a podcast the other night. We're, we're gonna do that again downstream and try and figure out our technical difficulties, but I know much less about these other makers. What I do know is that they make exquisite work this next one is by a knife maker called Griska, Griska Knives. And before I even pull it out of the sheath, we have to look at this sheath. It's just beautifully done leather work. That is always impressive to me. It's like my hog tooth knife, um, uh, my, my, uh, my fighter. He made such a beautiful sheath for it. The sheath rivals the beauty of the knife, almost, obviously. It, it can't surpass the beauty of that knife, but he really knows leather. And it looks like this gentleman, uh, Mr. Griska, really knows leather too. Just beautiful straight stitching. Um, the welt on the side is really nice. Um, I like this uh, scout style uh, attachment piece here. And uh, even though that's not how I would carry it. I don't think I would carry this a little bit differently, but just in the very, very nice sheath. Okay, let's take a look at the Quaken that resides inside. Look at this. Oh my Lord, look at that. So it, it appears to be, now I haven't done my, my, uh, my I, I, I don't know this for sure. This appears to be a San Mai blade. Uh, Maybe Mr. Griska can correct me if I'm wrong, um, but it looks like San Mai. Um, maybe it isn't. Maybe it's just a, uh, maybe that's just a Hamon line for some other reason. I'm, I'm not sure. But look, here's his maker's mark. It's stamped in there, Griska. Let's see. I like the way that looks. There we go, Griska. And just a beautiful blade shape. Just so nice, that full length swedge with a little bit right here at the uh, for the thumb. I like that. I've mentioned before, I don't like my thumb resting on swedges so much, though this is not a very thin swedge. It is there uh, in any case. This is a five inch, one, two, three, four, five inch blade. Um, just masterfully done. Um, and speaking of masterfully done, look, let's look at this handle wrap. Oh my goodness. So you've got the ray skin, the traditional Japanese wrap, uh, sukimaki, I think it's called. You've got the uh, ray skin under here. So ray fish have a very distinctive looking skin, and it is uh, also grippy. <laughs> and I think that's why it's always been used uh, in Japanese blades. Put that down first. Ooh, this is not one I want to 
drop. Uh, and then they put that wrap on and that cord wrap is just beautiful. And one thing I love, it's a subtlety, but you can see how the wrap is twisted at the peak. And when the wrap is twisted at the peak, it gives you these uh, staggered peaks that really add to grip. I mean, this thing is a pleasure to grip. Your fingers just sort of nestle into these little nooks here between the peaks and uh, man alive, is it comfortable? Is it comfortable? And it remains relatively slim because you don't have big scales uh, bolted to the sides of this. It's just cord wrap uh, over ray skin. It, the whole package remains pretty slim, but really comfortable and, uh, um, well, seemingly uh, utilitarian in the hand. Of course, I say seemingly because I haven't used this knife and I don't plan to, but I can imagine how you could use this knife to great effect for a while without fatiguing and, uh, and without any sort of discomfort and and have a 100% sure grip with this awesome um, Tsukamaki grip. But really the blade is the star of the show here. It is just beautiful. So check this guy out. It's Griska Knives, G-R-I-S-K-A Knives on Instagram. And uh, he's got a lot of really interesting stuff. It's not all Japanese looking, um, but this one certainly is. And I think he did an amazing job. And I do need to find out about that steel. I do need to find out about that steel. Um, I will put that down there. Just a beautiful knife. Thank you for entrusting me with that, Justin. It's greatly appreciated. All right, next is uh, two knives. Next are two knives from um, an in interestingly named outfit, Old Squirrel Knives. And... Um, Justin sent it to me in a special case, sent me these two knives in a special case, and they are special knives. I'm going to show them to you again with their sheaths. It's that carbon fiber uh, patterned Kydex. Very nice. And here, I'll set them down so you can take a look at these blades. The first one is a Tanto, more of an Americanized Tanto with the shape of the blade. And it's got an acid stone wash. It appears to be an acid stone wash. But you can you can also see if you look very closely. Now, I'm going to try and put a background here so we can get a really good focus on the steel because I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this. But you can see waves in there. You can see waves in there. And I can't tell if it's where two different steels come together or whether this is a, a pattern Damascus, and I can't uh, and I can't make out, I can't make it out completely. Um, but just oh man, a great great knife. It feels really good in hand. You've got uh, some nice jimping carved up here um, for indexing and for grip. It gives a great grip there. And something I like about an EDC fixed blade is the handle is only as long as it needs to be. Um, it's 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 sort of rounded or it's like half an octagon at the end so that's is essentially rounded and somewhat short or just as long as it needs to be which is what i like because i wear fixed blade knives in the waistband and so i don't like anything poking in my ribs when i sit down in the car or uh, or anything like that i don't like any angles and i don't like long handles on edc fixed blades and i think this really hits the mark uh, let's take a look at this handle here. Really nice uh, attention to detail here. You've got a, a cool little uh, pin, a custom pin there. And then whatever the hell this material is, some sort of composite, very interesting. You've got red G10 liners. And then from the top or the bottom, you have this Coke, uh, Coke bottle shape. So your your fingers just, you know, what can I say? Your 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 palm fits perfectly in this swale, and then your fingers on the other side just fit perfectly there. It widens out here to give you a little bit more, especially if you have to thrust. And uh, same at the tail end, at the pommel. It gives you a little bit more in case you have to retract or pull out. And, uh, oh, man. this So with this shaping of the handle, when you look at it from the dorsal view, that gives you some of what you miss from not having a guard 
because it really locks your hand into this into this knife. And with no guard here, you know, if if it didn't have this sort of contouring, it would be much easier, especially with a somewhat somewhat uh, slick material like this, to ride up onto the blade and the thrust. But here you have that Coke bottle shape, and it just locks you in. Ah, beautiful knife, beautiful knife. Uh, this is almost like I'm, I can just barely see the pattern, the wavy pattern in here. And it almost makes me wish that this one wasn't acid stonewashed. It, it feels like you want to see the, uh, the, the uh, pattern in that steel. Um, just a beautiful knife. What is this? How many inches is this? One, two, three, three and three quarters inches on that blade. And uh, just a great, no doubt, utility knife, no doubt a great tactical knife or self-defense knife as well. Also from Old Squirrel, Old Squirrel Knives is a Quaken. Here it is in its sheath. And I will pull this out. And look at that. Look at this Damascus. A gorgeous Damascus blade. Straight spined, upswept edge. I'm calling it a quaking. Uh, maybe it's a roach belly. Maybe it's something else. I'm not sure. But to me, it's it's more Japanese in in origin. And maybe maybe these red pins have something to do with it. They do evoke the Japanese flag just a little bit. This one has that same sort of contouring. We're looking at it from the dorsal view, uh, but just a well, uh, quite a bit more slender. Um, in width and more subtle in the contouring. You can still see that Coke bottle shape, but it's a lot more subtle because the whole, the, the scales are just a lot thinner. They both feel great in hand. Actually, if I were forced to choose one, which man, I, I hope I am <laughs> just kidding. That's not happening. But if, uh, you know, if I were, if I had a gun to my head and some, someone said, you have to choose one of these knives and only one, I would pick this one because the handle is even a little shorter than the other. And like I mentioned before, I do like a short handle for EDC fixed blades, but also it's a lot more slender and would just, for me and my style of carry, it would ride nicer. Um, I have experimented with wearing this, uh, carrying this, not outside of the house, but in, uh, in my waistband, three o'clock, drawing it like this and it, it works great. Incidentally, so does this, though it's not as comfortable to carry because it's just a much thicker handle and, and just a skosh or no, 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 just a titch longer. Um, so this this Quaken, I think, is really beautiful, especially with that uh, Damascus steel. That blade shape is just it's at once totally menacing and completely utilitarian. And look at that. Look at the uh, width of that bevel. I mean, of that uh, secondary edge there. That is a sharp, sharp, thin behind the edge edge. So that is from Squirrel, Old Squirrel Knives. Nice work, man. I like what you do. And uh, these are two beautiful examples. Again, thank you, Justin, for sending them along. Uh, Penultimate Knife is a really cool one by someone named Lucky Waluski. Walusiak, I'm sorry. That's not a hard name to pronounce, but for some reason, Lucky Walusiak. And uh, it's cool. You you look at this really excellent sheath, though I must say, if I'm picking nits, I never like a sheath to come to a point, uh, but that's only, again, because of how I carry. So I like them to be rounded off because it's going to be in my waistband. And uh, so the fewer pointy things, the better. Uh, but again, that's just a uh, personal choice because of how I carry. Um, but a gorgeous sheath, and you can see he's got his own Kydex. I mean, is that class or what? This is his uh, maker's mark, which you can see in full effect here on the handle in that sort of a little window there on the handle there. Uh, but he's got that on his Kydex. It says Lucky here, and, and look, he's got his own clips, man. Look at that. This metal clip, which I love. I love these metal clips. They're great. That's um, my preferred carry. Um, maybe not this one in particular, though I do like this one, uh, but the discrete carry concepts, that kind of thing. Um, so he's got his own clip. He's got his own Kydex. It's almost over-branded, except it's just a really cool, uh, really cool thing. So 
It's not like SOG. All right, uh, you can see the sort of random rock pattern milled into the G10. And let's go, you can tell it's full tang here. And let's check out this Tanto blade. Look at that. Ugh. And that was a positive, ugh. I really like this Tanto shape. I love how aggressive that point is. Um, you know, I guess needless to say, it is super screaming sharp. I mean, the edge is just ridiculously sharp. Um, here you have a very subtle hollow grind on the straight. And then this flat is a flat grind. And I'm pretty sure this is hollow. It feels like it's hollow. And then you've got some sort of acid acid wash or some sort of treatment uh, to, this, to the blade, giving it that nice weathered look. It's got a very subtle swedge, almost maybe it's more like a, cham a chamfer on the top of that blade. But this would make a great utility knife. This would make a great, you know, if you can if you can manage carrying a knife like this around, this would be an all-arounder. Plus, of course, it's nasty too. You could use this to nasty effect if you needed to. Fits feels great in reverse grip, and it feels great in edge in tip down reverse grip because it's a you know it's, the handle is just a stick. It's two parallel lines, and this is what our hands are optimized for, isn't it? Carrying sticks, using them, using them as weapons. Uh, just a great knife. Um, I was looking at, you can check out all these guys on Instagram. Ron Steele Designs, Griskin Knives, Old Squirrel Knives. This is uh, Lucky Walusiak. Just, he's got a, they, they all have pretty wide bodies of work with, uh, you know, quite a bit of variety in their designs. Um, this one is very appealing to me. I really like this one. Now, if this were mine, and I commissioned this, I would, I would keep the handle as long as the, um, as long as that G10 is. And I would not have the protruding tang only because I, I feel like if you did that with this and rounded off the pommel, like it is here, just shortened it to the length of that G10, this would make an outstanding in the waistband, uh, knife because it's a short ish blade at three and a, what is this? Uh, at, just three and a quarter inches. It's a shortish blade, but incredibly, I have a feeling it would be incredibly effective and just a an, an very useful tool to have around as well. Um, so for me and my carry style, I would, uh, I would request that be made smaller, but uh, man, this thing's all class. And I got to say this maker's mark window thing is very cool. So it's just a little hole there. And you know what I would do? <laughs> Actually, if we're going down the fantasy uh, fantasy knife build thing with Lucky Walusiak, I would have this, I would request this back here in the aft portion of the handle so that you could use it. I like a little divot there when you're changing grips from standard to reverse. It's nice to have a little divot you can you can kind of sink the fat of your, hand, uh, your fingers into for changing grips. So maybe I would do that. I love the details on this knife. I love the overall shape of the blade. And uh, he had one on his website that looked somewhat like this, except uh, not on his website, I'm sorry, his Instagram feed. It looked somewhat like this, except, um, how do I explain this? The area where this secondary tanto point is was wider than at the Ricasso. So it expanded, widened out towards that secondary tip instead of instead of being kind of just two parallel lines that terminate in that upward uh, point it, it it widened out towards that upward point and to me that that's just so cool <laughs> so uh lucky walusiak tanto very cool little edc knife okay speaking of very cool little edc knife last but certainly not least last and i think my favorite in this group is a three-way collaboration. And uh, the main, the person who made the blade is someone I'm dying to get a knife from. And actually, I wanna get this knife just larger from this guy. Uh, maybe you know him. Uh, I've shown off one of his knives before that uh, Justin sent me. And uh, that is Jacob Creates. Jacob, J-A-K-E-B, Creates on Instagram made this blade. But Jacob Creates, Jacob has been, uh, having Cerberus knives do these wicked coatings 
on his blade. So the coating is Cerberus knives. And then Bright for War is someone I just discovered through, I didn't discover him, someone I just learned about through Justin, uh, makes these incredible Japanese style knives and does these incredible uh, handle wraps. So this is a three-way collaboration with Jacob Creates, who made the blade, Cerberus Knives, who did the coating, and Bright for War, who did this amazing Sukamaki cord wrap. And this little Bowie, it's a pocket Bowie, fits in my hand so perfectly. That rounded organic handle there just nestles in the palm. And actually, if you needed to push and do a, a push cut or a thrust with this, that rounded pommel just fits in the palm so nicely. You're not riding up on anything, but of course you still have this uh, sort of Moran style guard here. Uh, this is a chisel ground knife. Now, Jacob does both chisel grinds or um, standard V grinds, but he seems to have a real propensity and real uh, love for these um, chisel ground blades. And man, he did a great job on this one. It's a thin stock already, but with this super deep hollow grind, that's a hollow grind there on that primary um, bevel. With that super deep hollow grind and the thin chisel ground blade, listen, you get more of that crazy sharp sound. Um, I'm in love with this knife. It is, it's a little charmer. It's a wicked little blade. It would go great. This is, this would legitimately be a great in the pocket, just drop it in the pocket knife. Here's the sheath. It's a nice sheath. Uh, Justin has an ulti clip on it. So, uh, you know, the clip. So I like that. But without that clip, you drop this in your pocket, maybe even uh, make a special sheath with one of those little hooks. And uh, oh, this would make a great pocket Bowie. Just great. I love this thing. And now look at the tip. The tip is faceted in such a way that it gives you a sort of tantooid or spantooid front there. And that is flat ground. So you have this really thin chisel ground hollow mane, and then that tip is a nice flat for, for stout tip <laughs> during penetration, for a stout tip during penetration. That just sounds awful. So I'm going to stop saying that. Uh, there is his maker's mark. That's a Jacob's makeup's mark, maker's mark, I believe, unless they did something. Maybe they did a three-way there with the, with the, um, with the logos, I'm not sure. Because it looks kind of like a B, looks kind of like a C for Bright for War, Cerberus, and kind of like a J for Jacob. So who knows? I don't know. I, I need to find out. I'd like to have all three of them on the show. So, But uh, before I do, this will have to hold me. I love this knife. And um, if the box comes back to you, Justin, just a little bit lighter, um, you know what happened. <laughs> just kidding not stealing a knife from you. Thank you for your generosity. Uh, these have all been loaners from the great and powerful Justin over at Tier 1 Gear and EDC Reviews. Definitely please go check him out. He's got a great YouTube channel and also an awesome uh, uh, Instagram presence and uh, an incredible collection, as you can tell, with a real knowledge of these up-and-comers and, and new-ish uh, custom knife makers. So there they are. I'm going to go through them real quickly. These first two are Ron Steel knives. The, this is the short round model, and this is the short round drop point model. He made those beads, and yes, that is fat carbon fiber on the handle. Next is Griska knives, uh, and this I am calling a Quaken, and uh, with beautiful, I'm not sure what the steel is, perhaps Sanmai, uh, some sort of pattern, uh, some sort of welded steel, I would say, with this gorgeous race skin and uh, lace wrap in a sort of traditional Japanese style. The next two knives are from Old Squirrel Knives, uh, this beautiful Tanto with the, uh, with the Coke bottle uh, contouring of the handle, and then this slick little Quaken optimized for a concealed carry, if you ask me. Uh, with that carbon fiber, those uh, rising sun pins, and then, of course, that incredible-looking Damascus steel blade. Uh, here you have the Lucky Walusiak Tanto 
EDC style knife. Also very, very stout and yet very, very sharp. And then my favorite of the bunch, though picking a favorite out of this bunch is, uh, is a challenge. Uh, but this is the Jacob Creates Cerberus Knives and Bright for War Pocket Bowie. Just an incredible little custom knife. He's got one called the Reverse Cowboy. Wink, wink, with a with a longer blade and a slightly different shaped handle, but that that same blade. And I think that's the one I'm going to have to get. And I think I'm going to have to have him double edge it or, you know, sharpen that switch. So there you go. Thank you so much again, Justin. Greatly appreciated. That's the last time I thank you. I know I've been going off. I really, really appreciate it. I'll be sending these back to you in a little while. So uh, that's about it. Make sure you join us on Sunday for another great interview. Uh, I love doing these interview shows. They are they are incredible. But what do I what do I love? Well, I'm not going to say even more. What do I love in a different way? I love Thursday Night Knives because it's a great and informal way to catch up with you all, hang out, uh, kind of go off at the mouth about knives, and hear you go off at the mouth about knives. So join us there and there. And of course, if you can't download these. Da uh, you know, if you can't finish these on video form or whatever, whatever, download them onto your favorite podcast app, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google, iHeart, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, uh, and a lot more. So, um, oh, Pandora too. I think we're on Pandora. So there you have it. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher. I am so grateful. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. You guys make this so much fun and so worthwhile. And I think Jim uh, believes the same. Thanks for watching. Until next time, don't take doll for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast